Someone's asking, what's the limit of the 3.0T engine as far as reliability and performance? Should I start building my motor with a good ported blower? So this is something that's been coming up more often. And um, I think even in a, in a few shows ago, we commented how it's astonishing that the 3.0T market hasn't really gotten into engine building yet. Um, I mean, we're what? 12 years into yeah. the 3.0T. Yeah, it's, it's crazy to think. And, and really, there's there's no widespread, um, you know, rods, pistons uh, program uh, for these motors. So these these motors are, are generating, I mean, what, what's what's peak torque on some of these motors? Over over 600 foot pounds? Well, or? I mean, it's four, you know, in the fours at the wheels easily. Yeah. Um, so I mean, some, are, some are tickling five, something at the wheels. So, yeah, it's up yeah. there. We're, we're to in the start. five to 600 foot pounds of torque range, which is double stock. Uh, factory yeah. and these motors have been holding up so yep. um you know we we have developed a series of tunes which uh, don't require engine upgrades so our our most extreme uh, dual pulley uh, e40 tune with a stock blower and all the right pulleys that we specify for our tune we've had we've had you know really no no evidence that that that's ever caused uh, an engine to mm -hmm. fail uh, we have had one one customer who, who had a cracked piston um there was nothing uh, that indicated that uh, it was the result of high egts or bad tuning yeah it was a single uh, one piston the, crack the, the teardown we did and saw it was a single yeah. piston um, there was no other indications um and there were no indications on that piston either other than there was nothing was uh, melted you know, nothing a, had gone a hot. structural failure yeah. of, of the piston itself yeah so you know it, it's unfortunate but you know when you're running double factory torque you know, the, the, there's a reason why Audi r ran, you know, 350 foot pounds of torque and not 600, um, because the parts in their motor, you know, they they can obviously withhold five, 600 foot pounds of torque across a broad spectrum of cars, but every once in a while there's some tolerances or that piston just wasn't as, you know, forged as, as well as some of the others. Yep. And one out of six of the pistons in that motor cracked. I mean, it didn't come in with three cracked pistons or anything like that. So, you know, you, you start getting into the margins of error where um, you, you start seeing some of these failures. This is why the factory runs the power they do because... Well, they build a huge at margin. At that level, yeah. they're, literally, they're literally... I mean, we've talked to factory engineers. They're, they're targeting like one or two failures per million engines with, with these cars. And now once you double the torque, what does that drop to? Nobody knows. It, it could drop to, you know, 5,000 out of a million. Regardless, um, you know, it skyrockets, but that's a chance you take. <clears throat> now, now we're, we're starting to see some customers are running ported blowers with our tunes. You know, we're, we're seeing customers run bigger crank pulleys with our tune. Um, you know, 194 mil crank pulleys, things like and, that. Yeah, not, up into the 200s on some of these setups. Yeah. So we've, it, never, we've, we've never run those pulleys. We, we've never, our tune was not developed. To run with whatever random pulley you know that's above 190 millimeter so you know you start getting into a situation where our tune will support the additional power but now the supercharger is producing more torque because it's spinning faster the supercharger is producing more more flow because it's ported and and so you know the power numbers and the acceleration numbers are going up that's a good thing yeah um but people are at the limit and so you know we're, we're seeing customers with uh what appears to be the head bolts stretching and lifting the head and blowing head gasket. Yeah, this, we, we, we had a report of this this weekend, actually. Yeah. And I, I, we, we have seen very little yeah, information. That's, yeah, that's, so the, that's the first report we've seen, so yeah, we need to the clarify that, that We've too. seen that. Um, so we're reaching out to those customers to try to get more information to see how we can support them. Yep. But um, there's nothing wrong with our tune, per se. Um, these things aren't happening because of detonation or, you know, necessarily. Now, you know, I'll, 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 we'll say... We, we don't know for sure because we don't know what, what the ported blower it is and we don't know, um, you know, how much boost and what pulley. Those, that, that's all stuff we well, haven't think, tested. Yeah, I think, I think that what the, the point here is like a lot of this is, is outside of our, uh, you know, either control or design spec. Um, and, and, you know, the further and further that, that these setups get pushed, you know, with water meth or meth injection. And, yeah. And, you know, ported blowers, big pulleys, that kind of thing. You're just getting, you know, you're running a finer and finer edge on what, you know, you know, what the systems can take and, and the margin of error that's there. 
Yeah. Uh, so. so, and then ultimately, you know, just material stresses and, and yeah. you know, physical limits that, you, you know, we're going to start bumping into power. This, and these are, car, these are cars that are fast. So, I mean, it's, yeah, they're making a lot of power. These cars are making a lot of power. So there's, there's two ways to go about this. If, if you don't want to deal with that, you want to keep your motor stock, you don't want to risk the chance of having a failure, great. Go with the, the, the base 0 through 4 Motorsport recommendations that we offer. Mm -hmm. um, don't run a ported blower. Run our pulleys. Run our heat exchanger. Um, any other supporting mods that we recommend. And run you know, the fuel that we specify. And that's a proven file that we haven't seen any failures with, um, mm -hmm. power-related failures. And that, that's, that's going to be a good, very fast setup. It won't be the fastest in the world, but it will be very fast. And you will have a freaking blast. Well, and that's the thing is you're chasing, you, you, if you're chasing the fastest time, there's a reason it's the fastest time. Yeah, it, takes, it takes a lot of effort to get there. So the, the, other, the other option number two is uh, go ahead and, and push things. Go to the, go to the track. Run the bigger pulleys, port your supercharger, uh, run, you know, other fuels if you, if you can, and build your motor. You know, get rods, get pistons, get head studs, and, and continue to push the envelope. And I think that's really what I'm excited about, to see the 3.0 T market push the envelope. Yep. And we, we've uh, actually, we've been working on some hard parts for the, these motors as well yeah. so what we've been anticipating more... this this coming and it, it it appears as of this weekend um you know we we could be in a new era of building 3.0 t motors to go faster than anyone ever thought we could before i mean yeah. you remember like four years ago apr released like the bigger supercharger and it was slower and you know there's there's been so many you know yeah. so many hitches and starts hitches oh, yeah. and and steps back everyone thought that the stock supercharger is maxed out. No one can ever go faster on it. And now two years like we're us, literally a second faster in the a corner second course. in the quarter mile, and you know a hundred horsepower more than the big upgraded supercharger that yeah. used to be. So this is an exciting time in the three point T. Um, a lot of you guys are second owners, third owners. Uh, you didn't pay seventy thousand dollars for the car, and you can have a blast with it and a good time. So. Yeah, bang, um, bang for buck on these things is pretty ridiculous. So I think, I think the future is bright for the 3.0T. It's a very exciting time. Uh, we're working on a hard parts program. I'm sure other tuners will be as well. Yep. And uh, we will continue to adapt and, and you know, build the files as needed to support those, those uh, higher power outputs. But I think at some point we will have a file that says requires upgraded rods, pistons, and head studs. Yeah, so that, because, that's... Because, that, you know, there's only so much you can do on the factory motor. Yeah, and that step's probably going to come with some other changes. You know, we're going to run three-bar map sensors and, you know, mm -hmm. some other... There's some other requirements just to support that high <laughs> ceiling that, that people are going to be pushing into. So, um, yeah, the files as they are now, we've run the crap out of them up through our, you know, 190 mil pulley that we have on the site. Yeah. I'm running a 179 on, on our car right now. Our in-house. Our in-house car. Uh, you know, because we needed it for some data collection. Yeah, uh, we're in eleven two full weight on the thing. So I mean, these cars are fast. As, yeah, you know, as yeah. it's just you know stock, stock, blower, stock blower, straight E forty file. Our our upgraded um, throttle body. You know, production file with yeah. our with our big throttle body. That was it. Um, so if you guys have any more questions about that, uh, please let us know. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we got to this point with the two seven much quicker. I think within five years, people were building motors. Yeah, well, the the uh, the. the the strength of the motor is clearly higher than, yeah. than the older V6s. Yeah, um, you can't push 600 foot-pounds of torque through a 2.7. Not you can, like you can, this. You can almost do it once. Um, yeah, you can do it a few times, but run after run, pull after pull, DSG cracking out shifts. It's, it's a much, much different, uh, yep. you know, more robust platform. So it's exciting that, that we're getting up there. And with the stock supercharger, because upgrading that thing's like at least 10 to It's a huge grand, cost. You know, so... There, there's plenty more that that we can do, guys. So this is, it's a good, it's a good thing. Yeah, and, and to go with this, is a there's a question here based on your experience. Is there an ideal pulley ratio for the best performance to heat generated? Currently, they're on a 183 lower, 57 upper. Uh, thinking about moving to a 189. That again, that really depends on your environment, your car, your you know your, how well your heat exchanger is working. Um, you know, you've got the pulley. You can get some data. We can we can you know feel free to send it our way. We can look at it and. You know, if you've got a bunch of headroom in your fuel system and in your, your intake temps, then, you know, you might see some benefit of bumping up a little bit. But I think our, our previous record, you know, 10, what was it, a 10, 3, 10, no. What did Russell run? Mid-10-3. Mid 10-3. Was it a 
Oh, so. Russell? I guess, yeah, he was a 10-3. Yeah, but that was on like a 184-mil pulley, I think it was. Or, you know, it was in the 180s. Um, so again, it, it's, it's not all about pulley ratio. Um, it's about finding that, that optimized setup that works in your, how you run, what you run, and yeah, how everything's performing. So we've got loggers for you. Um, if you want to get the data, if you don't have our data logger, just hit us up, tuning at 034motorsport.com. Get you set up with that, and then... Uh, See what, uh, what we can do. Yeah, I think there, there's, a, there's an important message in this question, uh, which is, you know, bigger is not always better. Like, harder is not always better. The, the optimal, you know, optimized is always the best. And so if, if you can't run a bigger pulley and deal with the additional heat, then there's no reason to run a bigger pulley. And we, we've been dealing with this on turbo tuning for years where... <clears throat> You know, guys, you know, are asking for 28 psi files, but the the motor actually on you know 93 or whatever makes way more power on safer and smoother and just as much power on 22 psi. Yeah, and and another thing to consider too is what you're going to be doing with the setup. You can run a big pulley if you just want one hit in the gear. Yeah, you want to if you want to go fast on a quarter mile though, and you really need that sustained, uh, you know, power duration. Um, the bigger pulley is not necessarily going to get you there if you're yeah. just pumping a bunch of heat into things. So, uh, Sean, Sean just clarified, was Russell was 1039 uh, on the 187 mil pulley. So, um, right, right in, the, in between there. 